everyone, Kate here from MB Tennis. Hope you guys are doing great today. Today we are going to be talking about something that we actually did our first video on. So if you guys are an OG from the channel and a master of all MB Tennis content, you will know what today's video is. For those that don't, we are going to be talking about mini tennis. Mini tennis was actually the first video we ever recorded on the channel and we did a little clips and drills you can maybe do for mini tennis and today we're going to be talking about it again but before we jump into it make sure you guys are liking and subscribing we have a lot going on in the channel everywhere from product reviews to the chasing 13 which is super exciting and we will continue to do that we also do tips and tricks and drills and of course, documenting you know my college career and how my team is doing. So lots of stuff happening. Make sure you guys are liking and subscribing so you don't miss any of it. So to get into it, mini tennis. Today I'm gonna to be going over three things that I think mini tennis help with, and then also three mini tennis games that you guys can play at home with your coach, a player, whoever you wanna play with. So the first thing that mini tennis helps with, in my opinion, is consistency. So there are a plethora of mini tennis games and drills that you guys can do that you just get reps in from the, the service line. So I feel like mini tennis really helps me with consistency because I always do it at the start of practices and then when you back up to the baseline, you feel like you have a really good rhythm because at the end of the day when you're get good at mini tennis, you're not missing in the mini court, so you have some rhythm when you go back to the baseline. So mini tennis definitely gives me, and from what I've heard from other people, a lot of consistency, so it really helps with that. So make sure you guys are doing some mini tennis always before you guys go back to the baseline every practice. The second thing that I believe mini tennis helps with, and it helps me with, is feel. So there is once again, so many games and drills you can do with mini tennis that really help with your feel. For example, you can play mini tennis with just slices, you can play with just topspin, you can play with both, you can play with volleys, touch shots, etc. So this is a great opportunity to, to warm up your touch, but to also work on your touch too. So this is definitely something that people often skip and then they go right back to the baseline and they're missing out on that time to really work on touch shots such as volleys, slices, drop shots, those kind of things too. So we have consistency and touch. And then the last one is being able to generate effortless power. So that one might seem really weird, but I'm going to explain it. So if you're going to do some mini tennis consistency drills, so I don't know, let's think about one right now. You're gonna play mini tennis just down the middle and you're gonna just try and aim for the line and you're not gonna miss a shot. So let's say you can't miss a shot, you can either hit slice or topspin. But in this instance, let's say we're playing topspin and you gotta go for two minutes without hitting a shot, without missing a shot. If you are constantly hitting back and forth, when you back up to the baseline, you will notice that you feel like you can kind of generate effortless power and you can kind of place it wherever you want. I actually don't know why that happens, but after I do like a little mini tennis game or drill, I feel like I'm definitely able to generate some effortless power. So that's another reason why I like to do mini tennis because it makes me feel like I can generate a lot of power from the back. So. If you want to have consistency, effortless power, and some better touch and feel, folks, you got to do some mini tennis every practice. Now, mini tennis, depending on how much time you have for a practice, so if you know you're going to be on court for like two and a half hours one day, you can stay in the mini court for like five to ten minutes. Like the other day, I had a practice, and I stayed in the mini court for 15 minutes. So it's definitely a good opportunity to work on some stuff. But let's say you're on the court for you know, maybe an hour, maybe you're only in the mini court for one to two minutes. So it just kind of depends how much time you have, but definitely something you want to do every practice. So with that being said, now I'm going to show you three games that I love to play in the mini court. All right, everyone. So for the first game, what we have and what we call it is Pong. Uh, I know some people call it the Djokovic game or some other things because Novak is very famous for playing this game. 
And essentially what has to happen in this game is you're playing with somebody and you can either play in one square or both squares. Normally doubles alleys is out and you need to hit the ball on your side before it going to the other side. So essentially it's like playing ping pong, but how we serve in ping pong is you hit the ball on your side before it goes over the net. So it's the same thing. So you can either play with one bounce or no bounce. So what I suggest is if you're just learning to play this game or it's your first time, you play with a bounce. So you hit the ball on your side, it bounces over the net, the other opponent or who you're playing with lets the ball bounce and then they can do the same back. Now you can do it high, you can do it low, and once you get good you're able to kind of move the ball around the court, make it bounce high, make it bounce low, play with a little touch and feel, kind of deke them out. And then once you're getting good at that, then you can kind of graduate to not letting the ball bounce, or you can even play with both. So this is a great game. You can either play it at the start of practice or at the end. It doesn't really matter. It's a nice warm up, but it's also a nice way to finish the practice to have some fun. And that goes for all mini tennis games as well. I uh, just like to have some fun out there, start or finish with it. All right, so the next game we have is called the touch game. So pretty bad name, I know. But what you're gonna do is, this is generally just played in one service box. If you want, you can do it in both service boxes, but it could be really difficult. And I would only probably suggest playing that one on clay, and I'll explain here in a little bit. So, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna get four different cones. So as you can see, there's four cones on the court, or four, four stripes, four dots, whatever you have for equipment. And you're gonna start at the net and you're gonna take six steps. So one step followed by another step, three steps, four steps, all in a row. So it should be about six feet. And the goal is to only play tennis, mini tennis, in that little box. Anything can go, you can hit slice, you're not gonna be able to hit topspin because it's too difficult. You can volley, but that is difficult as well. So this game is really challenging your touch and feel, and it's just a really fun game to work on your touch and feel. Um, the reason I kind of talked about why you might not want to do it in both uh, service boxes is because it's extremely difficult. It would be fun to do on clay if you played both service boxes because it could be a good way to work on sliding. Uh, but other than that, this is just a really good way to challenge your feel and touch because even when I play this game, I have a very difficult time because you really cannot hit the ball that hard. And the final game, one of my favorites, we call this the two touch volley game. So what you're gonna do, you need to have a partner or coach or whoever, and you can only play in one service box. You can play with alleys if you'd like, but I find sometimes working in a small area is more fun with, with this one because the rally can be longer. So the goal of this game, you cannot let the ball bounce. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna hit the ball up like a self rally or self feed. You hit it up, rally to yourself, and then hit it across the net to the other person. They're gonna self rally to themselves and hit it back. So the goal is to move your opponent around the court, forward, back, sideways, and the goal is to be able to obviously beat them. So this one is so fun because you can have rallies that are like upwards of 20 shots sometimes, and it just can come down to who is better with their hands at the net. And it's just really fun because it really challenges your touch and feel around the net. You can hit kind of lobs, you can hit rinky-dink slice shots, backspin. So it's just a great way to, like I said, with even the Pong, you can warm up with this game, but you can also finish with it as well. 
So with all these three games you guys can play, you guys can really make the scoring however you'd like to have it. So it can be, you know, game to five, it can be game to seven, game to 11. If you really want to go for a long time, you can make it 21, but that would be crazy. Uh, and yeah, have fun with them. All right, everyone, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed those three games that I gave you guys. Definitely try those out. I know some of them you maybe are familiar with, but it's always good to see them and get a little bit of a refresher so you guys can try them out with your coach or a friend or even in your warm-ups. The other thing that I would really want to just put in here as well is not just club players play mini tennis. College players play mini tennis, pro players play mini tennis, everybody plays mini tennis. So don't ever think that mini tennis is something for beginners or people that are just picking up the racket and learning. Everybody plays mini tennis and I think it is beneficial for all levels of play. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will catch you guys on the next video.